Research has shown that marijuana is capable of providing treatment and management for a range of illnesses including but not limited to cancer, nausea, glaucoma, multiple sclerosis, chronic pain, anxiety, depression, poor appetite, and eczema. We begin our two-part series of the growing ganja industry. You're watching Come Chat With Me, a Caribbean lifestyle magazine, and I'm your host, Ziggy Bless. 268 plus documented medical uses for marijuana. 76% of medical professionals worldwide approve marijuana. Forecasts are that the market for cannabinoids will become a 50 billion US dollar sector by 2029. 21 plus countries have legalized medical marijuana. My name is Henry Lowe. Um, uh, by profession, I'm a medical um, researcher. Um, and uh, some people describe specifically as a medicinal chemist. Um, my interest is looking at indigenous plant resources for medicinal purposes. My name is Jermaine Bibbons. I'm the head of marketing at Epican. And who is Epican? What is Epican? Epican is a medical cannabis brand in Jamaica. We are the first vertically integrated um, medical cannabis company in Jamaica, meaning we have license to cultivate, to process, and to retail, which is what we actually do. So we have our, our cultivation site or farm in the Blue Mountains. Our first retail store is right here in Kingston Marketplace. And uh, we also do the processing of our oils and, um, and stuff like that. I'm Bali Vaswani, the Chairman and Chief Ganja Officer of Kaya Inc. We're a vertically integrated cannabis company in Jamaica from R&D, cultivation, processing and retail. We had our first legal sale in March 10, 2018 in the English-speaking Caribbean. And we have been focusing on medical marijuana patients throughout the Caribbean. So we're here at Kaya Farms, one of the nursery areas. I'm Chris Pastore, the lead cultivator. Typically, we would have more plants out here, which you'll see inside there. It's where our mothers, our cuttings, and seedlings are housed. And we bring them out into the sunshine for hardening uh, to get them used to for what's to come. At the beginning of the 1970s, it's been a long, long time. Myself and uh, a research scientist from UWI, University of the West Indies, Professor Manley West, we, we, we used to meet after lectures on a Friday and talk about the use of our medicinal plant resources. And by the way, Jamaica has got 52% um, of all the medicinal plants in the world. So this little island is very blessed. This is the indoor nursery where we house our cuttings, seedlings, mothers, and then adolescents, we pull them in and out to, like I said, get hardened in the sun. And then we pack them up in in the night to avoid rain and just space issues. We have over 50 varieties. Um, at any given time, we probably have 25, 30 on the shelf. Example of a few varieties that we're about to test. Um, you can see different expressions from the different parents of the crosses and uh, once we fruit them we'll select the ones that we like uh, for what we hope we're looking for in the different strains and uh, go from there and turn them into our large mothers and then they will become cuttings that will give the same genetic expression thereafter. This uh, seedling is expressing a more sativa characteristics from the shape of the leaf as opposed to this one with the more broad leaves that would say indica leaning. Indicas give you the body relaxation, more of the uh, just straight relaxation. Uh, people tend to lean to the sativas for day activities or work or to remain more clear and functional. This is a strain called Kerpel. It's uh, basically a cross of purple and kush. And uh, it's one of our top sellers and people really love it. It's very pungent and right down the middle. Uh, as far as body and clarity on the high end. There. So this would be 
probably our most sativa dominant plant in the yard. It's Kingston Lemon Skunk. People really love the flavor because it is pretty much pure lemon and a real clear, uplifting high, very functional. Once you've found the mother that you want to keep, you'll take the cuttings which will express the same genetics thereafter, barring any pests or disease or any problems. Pretty much 50-50 hybrid. Some people it does quite a bit of body relaxation and others stay functional and clear. So it kind of just depends on you. But uh, it's one of our top sellers and an excellent uh, strain that we have. Well, we're inside our greenhouse and um, these rows, we harvest a row every two weeks. So you can see the age difference of the plants by looking at the different rows. These are our youngest. Then we move over to the next, uh, to two weeks older, four weeks older. Then there's finishing plants on the other side. We try to keep any people out of the finishing meds to try to keep as clean as we can in here. Um, and yeah, it's 160 plants that come down every two weeks and the cycle just continues and filters through the greenhouse. This is a strain called Maestro. Uh, Kamani Marley liked it, and so we named it after him. It's his favorite strain in the house. And uh, it actually won Concentrate Cup a few months ago in December. Audrey, I must commend you. Nice wig. Wig? Mm -hmm. Darling, this is all natural. Thanks to Fountain Mighty Roots. Fountain Mighty Roots is the best hair product coming out of Jamaica. Real black Jamaican castor oil and the pimento. Amen. It gives my hair a more healthier, bouncy, richer look. Even good for the edges. Edges? Where mm. can I get it? Log on to your website, fountainoil.com and even on Amazon. Fountain Mighty Roots. It's hair to save your hair. You owe it to your roots. <laughs> We have a new minister right now, you know, and I think he's very forward spoken on it, you know, Minister Audley Show. And he's taken a stance over the last six months in terms of building a system for the small farmer. What does that mean, right? You have to think of, I just, I explained in terms of the regulation, in terms of cameras, security, and how expensive it is, but they've created ways in terms of a small farmer um, getting a waiver in terms of their license fee. That's, that's, that's a start. If you don't apply and you don't qualify, you're not even in the game. So the first thing you have to do is go apply, right? So yeah, get there, you know, go get there. Then the second part is, how do I participate, right? And I think, you know, a good model is you look at Russ IV. Russ IV is one of the elders and he sits on the Cannabis License Authority, but he's also, you know, the president of the Westmoreland Hemp and Ganges Association which is a grouping of small farmers. So instead of trying to do everything on your own, in terms of administration, how many cars do I need? How many secretaries do I need? How many security guards? How many? At the end of the day, you know you can grow a good ganjo. You come into the facility, X amount of space from one acre to five acres is yours. You follow the rules, you take it, and you just grow your weed. At the end of the day, you tell them how many plants you're growing, how much I'm harvesting, this, that. They take care of the paperwork. At the end of the day, they log it in. They do all that stuff and then the final product of how it's grouped based on the farmer's name or the brand is then sold to a retail facility. So just like that, Junior could come check me and say, yo, Bali, I got 50 pounds coming every quarter. This is the price, this is how it's coming, this is how it's gonna work. It's coming through Westman and Hammond. Let's sign a tripartite agreement and I will present that and I will sell it. Like for, for, for Kaya at least, I can't speak for anybody else. For every parish that we're going into, we wanna work with local farmers, it's a natural thing. If, the whole thing is about everybody making, right? So if 25% of my crop from each parish can come from that parish, that's a blessing, right? But they have to go qualified, they have to get a license, they have to do the work too. But I'm more than happy to put that on it and make everybody a part of it. But we can't just stand back and say, no, that thing not for me, no Babylon thing or ray, ray, ray. At the end of the day, step up, get involved, is a real thing. <music> Our purpose is really to 
as our slogan says, um, to um, educate, medicate, elevate. Um, cannabis has a big stigma in Jamaica and around the world. People might be surprised that, you know, given that there is such a close relationship between Jamaica and cannabis globally in terms of the brand Jamaica, how deep the stigma and the stereotypes are around the plant and the user in Jamaica here. And for us, we are on a mission to, to elevate the conversation and tell, let people understand that this is not something that should be taken lightly. It was wrongly vilified throughout the years. This is a healing medicinal plant. And as the research is showing more and more these days, that a lot of people are leaving from traditional pharmaceutical um, establishment and turning to cannabis for, for treatment and it's, it's, its work. And I think that's why we are here, to be at the front of driving the medicinal um, benefits and application of cannabis to Jamaica and to the, and to the world. And without seeming to be boasting, I think uh, myself and my team, we have done the most exploitation for medicinal purposes so far. My first work was done with Professor Manley West at um, UWI and the journey into the research activities started one Friday afternoon where he had just returned from University of London where he was trained as a pharmacologist but his major interest was in plants to produce drugs and he said to me there must be something important about ganja and I said what do you mean he said well when he go when the fishermen smoke ganja before going out fishing in the nights, they could see the fish run better and they always come back with a boatload. If by any chance they didn't smoke before going out or left their ganja behind, the fishing would be very bad. I don't know about the logic to it, but what also happened is that there's a, a senior medical officer who came from that area and we met him subsequently and he was saying that when he looked at all the um, patients in the area, very few people had glaucoma problems. And if they did, it was very slight. So that's led us to say, hey, let's exploit this. Let's, let's go and research this and see what's going on. So we did. And um, that's where the work really started. So that we produced the first commercial product from ganja or cannabis right here in Jamaica and the name was Canasol. Now we had people coming from all over the world coming to buy the stuff but at that time the US government was very rigid so people had to use it here or smuggle it out. We could not get approval in the United States. Jamaica passed the laws in terms of decriminalization in February 6, 2015 where ganja was decriminalized in Jamaica, where you could have less than two ounces without a punishment effect or not being arrested. Since then, we've had our R&D license with the University of Technology from May 2015, and we got our first cultivation license in December 7, 2017. We had our first legal crop in February 26, 2018, and we had our first legal sale in our retail facility in March 10th, 2018. One of the questions I'm faced with quite frequently is, um, you know, how, what, what place does the, the normal Jamaican raster man has in the, in the revolution of the cannabis industry as it is now? And my answer to that is quite easy because our, our founder, um, Dwayne McKenzie, is an everyday normal Jamaica, Jamaican raster man. And, and we are very proud of that heritage. Uh, we honor what is best of the Jamaican culture. We honor um, the fact that he's a Rastaman and bring us to where we are now. So um, I don't, I feel like there is in this industry for an opportunity for anybody with the, with the, with the appetite, with the determination, with the drive 
to go for the benefits that, that's, that's there. After all these things were done, we were a little to be blamed for not having it doing even better commercially because my team didn't want to disclose much or even publish the scientific results because they were afraid people would take it away. But it, it, this all comes with the territory. When you're doing um, this type of research and development, you have to be ready to take risk. It's called entrepreneurship. But in those days, unfortunately, it wasn't really so. What you get to see from this is that what we've done is that we've, you know, under the regulation of the Cannabis Licensing Authority, we're tracking everything from seed to sale. So once you go into our genetics room and cultivating over 75 different genetics, we would take over 35 different genetics that would be on the retail side from hybrid sativa, indica, and CBD. If you look at that, any clone that's taken from a mother plant is, is checked by RFID, tracked by the Cannabis Licensing Authority from a barcode from the actual clone all the way to the sale. At every single moment during the process, the CLA is a part of every single aspect of the handling of the plant. So when we do each harvest, the Cannabis Licensing Authority would come and weigh each plant from a wet weight. Taking it from a wet weight, it would come back and once we have to transfer it from our cultivation facility to our retail facility, they would have to be present with a police officer or armed guard that is um, published with the CLA. Once it's moved to the retail facility, it could go to the patient. In regards to the patients, there are four laws that constitute what you can do in terms of purchase of medical marijuana in Jamaica. The first way is that if you're a qualified patient in your state or country, you could have a recommendation from your doctor from that country on the visit to Jamaica. The CNN story by Gupta, Dr. Gupta, where was talking about cannabis and epilepsy and how the children were cured. The Gleaner, which is our lead newspaper, reached out to me and um, said, well, you know, if uh, CNN can be pushing this and you had proven before that it has medicinal purposes, why don't you crank up again? And I took the challenge and we formed this first company called Mediganja. Now, Mediganja is the first company in the world commercially established for doing this. The inspiration from our founders is to elevate the conversation around cannabis. There, there is much more to the plant than just the frivolous um, um, characteristic that that has been burned with, you know, that cannabis users are lazy or they are unproductive. We know that's not true. And so our goal, our aspiration, our objective is to change that and put forward the spiritual benefits of the plant, the medicinal benefits of the plant, and elevate the conversation around cannabis in Jamaica and globally. In every single conversation, that means the conversation happened at a dinner table, at a boardroom, and on the street, right? And that's a very serious thing to say that was the most used word of 2018. So look, this thing is not going away. Look, terminology is terminology, just like anything in terms of the word, you know, like what word do I use, you know, for, her, you know, like in Jamaica, we use herb, we use ganja, we use a sling thing, we use marijuana, cannabis, you know, you know, the kush, the skunk. At the end of the day, the basis of where it came from is the word ganja, which is ganga, from the Ganges River. And that word came over there, just like, you know, like how Bob used Kyle, how different people use kush. It's just, you know, it's a different way and a form in every country. You have da, you have every, every different country from China, every, has their different ways of that word. And that word is a powerful word, but it's all based from the substance of what you're getting from the source of where it came from. And that's the plant. When we launched Medicanja, it was in every newspaper or radio station in the world, including Russia. You can go online and search it. It is now Medicanja. As you can see from my shirt here, this is the logo. It is an international brand. We had to fight against the odds and we're still fighting against the odds because 
I think our people in Jamaica, everybody, while we tacitly support cannabis, there's a fear from of United States because people feel that since the federal government has not approved it, although the state governments have approved, so most of them and our people are doing business and the growth will put them in the billions of dollars in the next couple of years, they're still afraid. My own company, Medicanja, its bank account was shut down because they're afraid the US government might see it and put them out of business. I don't know why there's that fear, but it is. Because when you stop to think of it, Colombia, Mexico, Brazil, Canada, Israel, I can go on and on. These people have found a way to do their business. Once it's not illicit, then do remember, the people should not really be afraid because the World Health Organization to which all nations belong said it can be used for medicinal purposes and for research, scientific research and development. It's there. So if you're working within those parameters, then there should be really no problem. People like Henry, Dr. Henry Lowe um, are doing great work for the movement and for the, the, the forward progress of cannabis in Jamaica and, and worldwide. And the reason why he's important and people like him are important is because Right now, people are kind of fact-based. They are science-based. They want proof, you know? And if we're going to compete against pharmacy, against the traditional medicine, we have to have the studies to prove it. And so for us, that's where people like Dr. Henry Lowe play a huge role in embedding and putting facts into the conversation and scientific findings. Those are irrefutable. You can't argue against the findings, you can argue against an opinion. And we know opinion, anybody can have an opinion one way or the other. But when you have the research to back it up, then that is irrefutable. And that's where I feel people like Dr. Henry Lowe come in and play a big role in the advancement of the industry. Cannabis should not really be locked down as it has been internationally. But maybe we say thank God um, people are seeing the new light and realizing that the medicinal potentials are enormous. Good scientific research, clinical research, is show that it has potential. So apart from what we did in 1972, we are back here again doing a lot more. Stay connected with Come Chat With Me. Thanks for watching. Come chat with me. See you next week. What you know about grow up on ganja tea? Not no lips on no Earl Grey, no Tetley. Not no Cersei, we talking sensey. We are off the block, off the stock, off the chair.